The days of Logitech rehashing the G15 slightly with every new gaming keyboard are over. Their last flagship refresh, the G710 Plus, was a huge departure from the usual and was their first mechanical gaming keyboard featuring Cherry MX switches. And the G910, the one we'll be looking at today, is a mechanical keyboard, but instead of going with the industry standard Cherry MX or can't get enough allocation of Cherry standard Kyla, they've worked with Omron on a new exclusive switch type, Romer G Mechanical Switches. Want to know if the G910 will take your gaming to the next level? Watch on. And uh, oh yeah, we've got our BenQ 24 inch XL2420G hybrid engine G-Sync gaming monitor video coming soon. Lots of gaming stuff coming soon, but for now the intro. From December 13th to 20th, 2014, you can save on select Intel CPUs, NUCs, and SSDs with special holiday rebates from select retailers. Click now to learn more. Physical tour time. This keyboard has everything. A 104 key layout with full anti-ghosting, nine extra macro-ready programmable G keys on the left and top of the WASD gaming area, each of which can toggle between three different layers of functionality per profile, a USB 2 cord with rugged strain protection, media control keys in the top right, including a rubberized volume wheel, nice touch Logitech, gaming mode to disable the Windows keys, backlight toggle, not one but two included wrist rests, wonderful rubberized angle adjusters on the bottom, a freaking dock for your phone to sit in so you can like see it in your peripheral vision while you're gaming, and full RGB LED backlighting on each key so that you can see that while you're gaming as well. So let's start with the switches, shall we? What are Romer G switches exactly? Well, they were created in partnership with Omron, so you can bet some science went into the development. They feature a 70 million keystroke endurance rating, a one-upmanship FU to Razer 60 million if I ever saw one. They require 45 grams of force, similar to Cherry MX Reds, which are very popular among gamers. They actuate after only 1.5 millimeters of travel compared to Cherry MX's two millimeters. They have a wider base for theoretical theoretically less key wobble, although I found them comparable to a Cherry MX keyboard with decent keycaps on it, and they were made with backlighting in mind, featuring a surface-mounted RGB LED at the bottom for better reliability compared to key switch mounted LEDs, and a light tube down the center of the switch for more even lighting and less spillover around the keys compared to Cherry's RGB design found on the K70 RGB. Okay, Linus, enough reading off Logitech's site. What do you think? <sighs> Truthfully, it took me a while to decide. They're just so different from anything that I've used before. Like rubber domes, as you apply pressure, they hold, 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 and seem to collapse with a bit of a mushy feeling, but tactile sensation. But unlike rubber domes, they don't need to be bottomed out to register a keystroke, making this one of the most responsive keyboards I've ever used. And not just for gaming, typing too. So while hardcore Cherry MX enthusiasts, myself included, might not find the experience that satisfying, especially if you like that crisp sound of MX blues or greens, the performance is undeniable, and for the majority of gamers out there who are still using rubber domes, Logitech and Omron have successfully engineered a much better upgrade that will still feel comfortable and familiar. So I consider the G910's Romer G key switches a smashing success. It's just too bad that Logitech paired them with the worst keycaps I've ever used in my life. The very worst. Like, not just oh, I guess they could tweak this and optimize that to make it better next time. But like Logitech, scrap these. Logitech calls these performance facet keycaps. And instead of being gently curved to embrace your fingers as they press down on them, they have this harsh angular shape to them that makes about as much sense to me as a shirt made out of square folded cardboard. The idea is that they keep your fingers centered on the keys and also improve performance when they're struck on the edge. This is meant to be beneficial for extremely high APM gaming. But even though based on program gamer feedback, they've supposedly reduced the height of the ridges once already, 
I just found myself getting caught on them when moving quickly between keys. So they actually slow me down unless I take a higher, less efficient path between keys. And then to make matters worse, they aren't even all the same, making it really hard to get used to them. The printing on the arrow keys and WASD, I guess is designed to help you feel your way back without looking, but it just feels weird on the fingers. Then the gaming half of the keyboard, so the left gets three angled grooves while everything else gets two. And when I say everything, I mean not everything because some random stuff like the left caps, shift and control are mostly flat and the windows key is convex. What on earth were they thinking? And then the supreme deal breaker here is that because these aren't Cherry MX key switches, the stems are not compatible, so you'll good luck finding sensible replacements if you otherwise really like the G910. What a shame. Because there's stuff I really like about it. I see Logitech getting flack about the ARX dock, but as an original G15 user who isn't trying to cram a tablet or a phablet into it, it's a welcome addition for me. The app does still need some work, like I'm not sure who derped and put the tab switcher at the bottom where it's almost impossible to reach without mashing your F keys, but you can switch profiles, monitor some rudimentary system info, and use your phone as a media remote. And more importantly, you can see notifications on your phone as they come in with without paying like 20 bucks for a phone stand. So rock on Logitech. And while we're on the subject of rock and stuff, aside from the media and profile keys being stuck orange and blue for some reason, the RGB backlighting looks great on this keyboard. Even the stylized keys and the ones with words printed on them are really evenly lit and Logitech software is easier to use than Corsair's and includes a greater variety of lighting effects than Razer's did the last time I looked at it. There's breathing with speed control, a twinkling star effect with customizable colors, a full spectrum color cycle with speed control, configurable color waves that go horizontal, top down, or out from the center with speed control, and a two color reactive typing mode with speed control. There's also a mode that shows the active game keys while gaming depending on your profile, another that allows you to set up different zones with different colors, and finally freestyle mode which lets you set every key a different color if you desire. They've still got some work to do here other than setting a dimmer version of a color or turning the key the backlight off entirely with a button there's no brightness control uh, you can't save and recall favorite freestyle designs without manually recreating them and lighting can't change on a per profile basis but it's a very decent starting point and they've got time to fix those things and that's what I think the G910 is. It's a starting point for Romer G switches which I think have a very bright future once they're surrounded by a keyboard that isn't let down by other poor design choices. Which reminds me, I haven't even talked about the wrist rest yet. Logitech includes two wrist rests in the box, but instead of having like a stylized gamer one with a nice wide resting area uh, for the left hand and then nothing for the right, and then a symmetrical one, since most of the gamers I know also type from time to time, and it's nice to have both wrists on the wrist rest, they include two different size gamer ones. Aya. Speaking of different sizes, are you sick of having to select a specific size for your phone plan before you know how much you're actually going to use? If so, you might want to check out Ting, a mobile service provider in the US that has a great December promo going on right now. So from now until January 5th, if you break your other contract to switch to Ting, they will cover 50% of your fee by giving you up to 150 bucks per device in service credit. This is double their normal offer to cover 25% of your fee. Now, considering that their average monthly monthly bill per device is $26, that could be a pretty darn significant savings for you. And if you use our referral link, that's linus.ting.com, you can actually get another $25 in service credit or $25 towards a new device. So check out Ting and try out their savings calculator because you don't have to commit to switch until you've already determined that you'll save money. You enter your last three bills, it spits out how much you would be paying on Ting, and as long as you've got good Sprint service in your area, that's the network they're running on, then you'll be having well, good sale service and you'll be paying less for it. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment letting me know your thoughts on the G910. We did receive a lot of requests for review, so I'm sure you guys have opinions about it. Thanks again for watching. Right, there's links in the video description to buy cool t-shirts like this one, give us a monthly contribution, and change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code if you feel like supporting the show. That kind of stuff helps us out a lot. Thanks again. And don't forget to subscribe. I forgot that one.